How's it going guys, KG here. Today I wanna to talk to you about what I saw at CES 2024 from Sony, and that was their mini LED prototype. Now it's really important to talk about this prototype because it could be what's in store for Sony in 2024 regarding their mini LED TVs. Now, Sony didn't say anything about their lineup or if this was even going to come to their lineup, but if you put two and two together, you kind of think that it might be coming in 2024. And of course, we're not going to really hear what their TV announcements are going to be until a little bit later, closer to release date is what they're saying. But I do think it will be sooner than later that we hear about these new models. Now I saw a couple of demos at CES 2024, but I do want to talk specifically about the ones that I saw that involved the actual prototype unit itself. And so one of the demos that I seen was demonstrating the brightness capability of this new prototype mini LED. And this was one that I came away with very impressed because they were showing the brightness capability next to a cutie OLED from a competitor. And you guys could probably guess what that TV was, but it is definitely an improvement off of other mini LED technologies that I've seen from other manufacturers and even Sony themselves. They had the X95L, the competitors, QD OLED, and the prototype all next to each other. And all three TVs were presented in the best way to give you the best sense of brightness from those TVs. And what I came away with with this demo in mind was that the mini LED technology that is in this prototype is much improved over the X95L. I saw a big difference in brightness from the X95L to the prototype, but Sony's saying that it's a 50% increase in brightness and a 300% increase in local dimming zones. So that's pretty impressive already off the gate. But what was more impressive was how the brightness is distributed. And I think this goes to the new mini LED prototype and the new circuit that's being used that I'll talk about in a little bit. But what we saw from this demo is that the HDR highlights were presented better on the mini LED prototype than both the X95L and the QD OLED. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a scene that mini LED is going to tend to struggle with. Now this is an OLED TV behind me, it's the LG C1, but I do want to explain a few things to you. So in a scene like this behind me, you'll actually see the mini LEDs typically can struggle in these areas. So you'll have a night scene like the one behind me, and then you'll also have some bright lights like right here, what you're seeing in this video. So if you look at the video and you look at the lights that are in the corner there, what I will see with the mini LED TV is that those lights won't be as bright as OLED TVs typically, especially QD OLEDs. And the reason for this is because the mini LED technology is just not advanced enough to shape the light in the right areas and so it will have a lack of light coming from the right places that are light sources so anything on the screen that will demonstrate a light source be it a lantern or a little mini light that's on a street lamp it really doesn't matter what it is you just don't have the technology it's either a the manufacturer is choosing to suppress the details in order to hide blooming and this is actually just gonna cut down on the brightness level of the light source that we are looking at. And then B, you have the fact that sometimes the backlight technology just doesn't have enough support from either the processing or the actual number of dimming zones. So you can even get times where the actual backlight performance is going to lag behind and you'll see trails of light. And that's something that I have noticed with previous full array local dimming TVs in the past. Now processing is getting better on every TV. Sony definitely leads the pack when it comes down to picture processing, but their processing isn't just going to be to clean up the image. It's also going to be to communicate with the TV, to tell the TV which zones to light up. And even more than ever now, with more local dimming zones, this new prototype has, is going to improve that even further. But one thing Sony has made clear is that really, they don't care about how many local dimming zones is in the TV itself. It really matters how the local dimming is controlled by the zones. And we've seen this in the past from Sony, that they use a lesser amount of zones than competitors TVs, but still they can control the backlight and show the right details better than a lot of the manufacturers can do. That is something that Sony has been doing for a while now, but now it gets even better with the prototype and seeing it firsthand, I have to say it is mini LED improved. I like what I saw. 
this brightness capability out of the TV is great. And one of the biggest things that drove them to make this TV was that they used this technology in their new mastering monitor, the HX3110, which can get up to 4,000 nits of brightness. And that is something that they really wanted to do with their TVs. They really wanted to make TVs get brighter and show off the creator's intent more than ever up to the brightness levels that creators really wanted to use. So it's nice to see them moving in this direction. And personally, I feel like the way that you evolve mini LED is to focus on the brightness capability, but not just blind brightness everywhere. They're focusing in on the highlights and making sure that the brightness is in the right locations. In that demo that we showed with those three TVs, I think that the mini LED prototype actually looked better than the QD OLED and then the QD OLED looked better than the X95L. But the fact that I liked the QD OLED better in that scene was very telling to me. Moving on to the next demo, what we saw was the actual backlight technology at work. So half of the TV was the actual backlight, so you could see what was going on with the backlight technology, and then the other half was the actual picture itself. It was cool to see it like this because you got to see the backlight technology at work along with the actual picture itself. And my takeaway from this demo was the prototype was shaping the light better than the competitor's mini LED. To me, the competitor's mini LED technology looked a little bit more like a blob in certain areas where the prototype was actually shaping the light to match what the picture was. And so that was a really cool thing to see. You could see based off the pictures they supplied here that I could share with you guys, very similar thing that they showed us at the demo, except for in the demo we saw, half of the screen was the backlight and the other half was the actual picture from the image that was being presented. But in the pictures you're seeing now, it's just purely the backlight technology at work. But if you look at the pictures, you'll see that the light is more precisely shaped to the actual image being presented. And so that, is one of the takeaways that I had from this is it was very impressive that that was going on. A lot of people are gonna ask about blooming and if blooming is going to be solved by this. And I don't think that necessarily blooming is going to be solved by this. Blooming is kind of just going to be on every mini LED TV and every full array TV. It's not bad by any means. It's just never going to be solved. And that's one thing you guys got to understand about LED technology is that you are not going to have a TV that doesn't bloom. And Sony told us that they're not necessarily bloom averse, which means that they're not really trying to hide blooming. And I think this is a good thing because when you go the method of hiding blooming, you get the result of really bad highlights. And I saw this personally with the Samsung QN90C when I reviewed it last year. At times, it would try to suppress the brightness from the highlights because it didn't want to show the blooming. At least that's what it looked like. So that's why we had QD OLED TVs look brighter than the mini LED TVs, which if you measure the brightness, the mini LED TV could get much brighter, but the QD OLED in most scenes would look brighter than most mini LED TVs we compared it to. But Sony's approach is a little bit different. They will show you a little bit of blooming if they have to, as long as the end result is showing you the details of what is being presented. So we got to see the circuitry of the actual mini LED. Sony is saying their driver operates on a 22-bit bus. Other mini LED drivers typically operate on an 8 to 10-bit bus. So this is like the normal range that they see in the industry. And this is also allowing them to get 30% down on power. And they said that it actually uses uses less power than a WRGB OLED. And they made this new LED driver in partnership with Sony's semiconductor business. And with this new 22-bit bus, they are able to control the dimming zones like never before. And they can not only offer different ranges of control for the dimming zones, but they could do it faster and more efficiently than ever before. So that would be the key to this new mini LED prototype. Sony's saying it's the world's smallest LED driver. And like I said, when I saw it in person, it basically shapes the light better than any other mini LED technology that I have seen to date. So as far as the numbers go, you have a 300% increase in local dimming zones, a 50% increase in brightness, and three times the zone density of the local dimming zones. And this is in comparison to last year's X95L. Sony said that their intention of this mini LED prototype is to make a TV that performs like their new mastering monitor. 
And I think that is such an awesome concept because you're not only going to make the fans that love creators intent happy, but in turn, you're going to make everybody else happy as well because local dimming control not only means that you can distribute the brightness in the right areas, but even picture modes like vivid mode can look very good as a result of this if they're using the technology the way that they are saying is intended. So I think that is a really cool concept because when everybody's happy, you got yourself a great TV. And one of the things that they showed off with the demos was shadow detail. And when it was next to the QD OLED, I saw that the prototype actually had better shadow detail than both the X95L and the QD OLED. The X95L had better shadow detail than the QD OLED, but the prototype had better shadow detail than both and better brightness than both. So that's what's really impressive to me is that you had the shadow detail and you had the brightness. And this is really a lot of things that matter to me in picture quality at the end of the day. I personally love when brightness is distributed the right way, in the right areas. This is why I want brighter TVs. I don't want brighter TVs so that you guys can go blind. I want brighter TVs so that we could see highlights represented like they are in real life. If you see car lights shining on the street, you're going to know they are bright. And when you see that in actual content, you're going to want to see that the same type of way. It's not necessarily going to blind you when you look at it, but if the whole screen was that brightness, then yeah, you would probably be a little bit blinded by it. But when the light is concentrated in the right areas and showed to you the way that it's supposed to be, this is where we get really nice, impactful HDR. And that is what matters to me at the end of the day when it comes down to HDR. Impactful HDR is going to be helped by high brightness, which is why I love that we are going this direction with mini LED, but we're also going this direction with OLED TVs. And so we have to recognize that as well, because as great as this prototype was at the end of the day, I'm not quite sure it's going to be QD OLED or even OLED with MLA technology. We have to see it side by side to make that full distinction. But I will say this, it is a huge step up from where mini LED was last year. And I'm very excited and I hope it comes to 2024 TVs so that we can compare it to all the TVs that we saw. And you know, I'm definitely gonna put those side by side, the OLED TV next to the new mini LED TVs, whether that be the Sony, if one is released or other brands, you can definitely find it on this channel. So make sure you're subscribed and turn on notifications for when I post a video or go live on my next live stream. If you wanna watch more 2024 TV coverage, check out this video right here. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.